Ah, modernity. There are, well, more than a few ways of describing it, but whatever it is, when exactly did it begin? We talk about the modern world all the time, but what does that really refer to? Where is the cutoff and why? Well, hello and welcome to Fire of Learning. This is a very interesting question and today we're going to be answering it, so let's get to it. Before we begin, I would like to thank Jeff Smith for being our most recent supporter on Patreon. He joins these supporters who make these videos possible. So the question is, what aspects or events separate our world from the past? Well, the answer is complicated and can vary greatly. The modern world can be said to have begun at multiple different dates depending on the context in which it's used. And of course, we have to remind ourselves what exactly constitutes the modern world is constantly changing year by year. It means a different thing today than it did 60 years ago. Several dates come to mind when we talk about dividing history and modernity. 1991, 1945, 1914, 1815, 1453, I would even consider going back as far as 476 AD in a very broad sense of the term, but that's about the farthest that I would go. That is the year that the Western Roman Empire fell, and therefore the year historians have labeled as the dividing year between the ancient and medieval worlds. It's in these subsequent Middle Ages that we see the modern formation of the world begin. Not just in Europe, but in places like the Middle East, with the rise of Islam and things as well. But is that enough to make it the modern world. Again, in a very broad sense perhaps, but it's a huge stretch. The seeds of our modern world may have been planted in this time, but I wouldn't really consider it the modern world for many other reasons. The Middle Ages got its name for a reason. It's the divide between the ancient world and the Renaissance, or Age of Discovery. The year 1453 is often seen as the beginning of that era. It was in this year that two major events happened. Firstly, the Hundred Years' War ended, and secondly, Constantinople fell to the Ottoman Turks, bringing an end to the Eastern Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire as a whole. The rest of the 15th and 16th centuries were full of other innovations central to how we think and live today. The kingdoms of medieval Europe started to become nation-states. The Americas, Africa, and Asia started to be explored, and Europeans, who of course led the charge in exploring the world, began to realize how big the world is and of what it consisted. The classics and old wisdom were rediscovered. New science and technology also took off, with the invention of the printing press, the seeds of the scientific method, gunpowder, advances in modern medicine, and more. We also have to remember the philosophical, social, and religious movements, like the Protestant Reformation, and the fact that art finally stopped consisting of, well, this. If we're going to stretch the term modern world, I would prefer to say that its earliest beginnings are in the year 1453 AD. Many historians fully or mostly agree, but again, we should take this with a grain of salt. Historians often refer to this as the early modern period and contrast it with the late modern period, which began around 1750 to 1815, and contemporary history, which perhaps began in 1945. This is with good reason. Perhaps more important to how we live our lives was the Industrial Revolution, doubtlessly one of the most important moments in human history. Industry. Industry. The Industrial Revolution changed everything. It marked the beginning of a totally new life for the peoples of the Earth. From about 1400 to 1700, the life of the average European peasant did not really change a whole lot. But once the innovations of the Industrial Revolution started coming around, everything changed. Mass production, advances in medicine, advanced means of transportation and communication, the rise of the modern class system, and much, much more are often coupled with other key advances and changes in human history, such as the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment would have a profound impact on how people think, not just in Europe, but across the world. We still argue about the philosophy of the Enlightenment, but no one can deny that it was the foundation of the modern Western world. It was in this time as well that the United States was born, the French Revolution occurred, the British Empire began its long road to world domination, and Napoleon's reign began. Napoleon's reign is sometimes seen as the last hurrah of an age of pre-industrial conflict and competition among European powers. After a long struggle, he was defeated in 1815. 1815, therefore, marked the beginning of Pax Britannica, a period of relative peace among European powers which had not been seen in hundreds of years. 
Because this took place around all the aforementioned events, many historians believe that 1815 is a good position for the beginning of the modern world. But Pax Britannica ended in 1914, and while innovation continued, the Industrial Revolution ended sometime in the mid-19th century. Did a new world violently dawn with the beginning of the First World War, which separates us from the Victorians of the 19th century and their society? In many ways, certainly so. Both world wars left a huge mark on the planet and by their end, society had drastically changed again. Perhaps it was in 1945 that the modern world began. Indeed, this is a preferred starting point of the modern modern world, the beginning of contemporary history. Events which are still unfolding and living. An age of decisions with long-term consequences that we still don't fully understand, as we're still making them. 1945 is when the map started to look like it does. The European colonial empires, more costly than profitable, began to fall apart. The United Nations began to form. Nuclear weapons became a reality. And not long after, we entered space for the first time. Computers were in use, and many other aspects of the modern world came about. The digital revolution, which truly defines our age, began sometime in the 60s. 1991 is the final year I would discuss here because it marks the end of the Soviet Union, which ushered in a profoundly different world perspective. The internet, which is doubtlessly one of the most important inventions in human history, only began recently, around the time of this fall. Placing the cutoff any sooner becomes complicated. Is the year 2000 history or the modern world? Can it not be both, and if so, to what extent? Is 2019 history? In a sense, depending on how we define the terms and look at things, but here's another important question. Has there been anything in 2020 that separates us drastically from 2019 or 2000? A matter of opinion, I suppose, but I would say not yet, and I imagine most people would agree. But then, the people of the future may be able to see a divide that we ourselves cannot see while we're in it. And so, as I've said, this question isn't easy to answer. People don't often wake up to find that their society is going to be suddenly changed forever. Things can and do happen suddenly, but rarely do all of the things that define an age begin at once. Though there isn't a clean answer, it is still an important question to ask. It gets us thinking about who we are, what makes us who we are, and why we are how we are. It allows us to keep track of our progress, and predict and prepare for what might come in the future, which is frankly what history is all about. Let me know in the comments where you believe the modern world began. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I invite you to come check out the rest of Fire of Learning, and to subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. To help support the channel, the donation on Patreon would be a big help. A special thanks to our patrons listed here. We are also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and there will be a link to the Fire of Learning Discord server in the pinned comment. So come check us out there too. Thank you for watching.